Okay, so here we are in Davis. It's the 4th of July. This is the 35 plus race. Um, there's been a few breaks off the front. It's a six turn, pretty tight course. Here we are going across the start finish line. I'm trying to just stay as close to the front as I can because kind of pretty confident it's going to be a sprint because there's some really dangerous guys still in the field and I have a feeling they're going to be chasing things down. My cat's trying to jump on me. This is a pretty, pretty aggressive field. I mean, uh, there was a lot of players. Pete's had a bunch of riders, Touchstone. Team in front of me, a v, v, I don't know what team that is, but VIE. They have two strong guys that are always at the front. There's Scott Cox from Cognition. He had one of his teammates with him as well. It was Allen. There's Ronnie. Michael. Michael Charlton, J.D. Bergman, all the, all the strong guys. Everybody's fit. It's July. There goes Chris Coble. Chris Coble attacked a lot. Um, usually got immediate response from the field. He and David Grundman, usually whenever they go off the front, Sayers, everybody reacts. Uh, if they get away, they're gone. So you got to almost react immediately. Um, this is my second race of the day, so I've already had a, a one-hour race prior in the Master of 45s. I'll probably post that one as well. I ended up getting uh, uh, fifth in that one. Uh, there was a two-man break off the front. I got third in the pack sprint. Uh, it was a pretty fun race, though. Um, it was kind of kind of sketchy with uh, there was 55 plus and the 45 plus together, and since the 45 plus guys were off the front. The 55 plus guys had no incentive to chase, but they had plenty of incentive to stay at the front, which made it kind of crazy. It was very slow. We'd speed up, we'd slow down. This race was just full gas almost the whole race. Um, it would bunch up just temporarily, and then someone would go off the front. Let's see if I can catch. I couldn't catch the lap cars, but we're coming down to a few laps to go here. It was a one-hour race as well. The Davis is usually, since it's on the 4th of July, is usually extremely hot. I've, I've done it when it's been 106, 108 degrees at times. Today wasn't bad. It was like 88 or 90. Uh, so the, the weather wasn't a factor at all. Uh, I think I only had one bottle in the race. There's Lawton from Make-A-Wish. Uh, Revs had two or three riders. Um, they had Aaron Cox and Mark Tucker and Richard Gable. I think they had one other guy, too. I forget which, which his name is. but Mike Sayers and Chris Baker from Touchstone, they're, they usually uh, they are always seen at the front, either going off in breaks or getting up in there in the sprint. So I actually feel pretty good. Um, I, I spent a good deal of the race mid-pack, back of the pack, and I noticed that there were a lot of splits, and so I decided it'd be better if I just fought to stay up front. Uh, there's Dave Kasel. He's uh, Super Dave. He's one of our strong SoCal riders. He's been uh, up north. I think he works for Specialized now, so he's he's up north quite a bit for work, and so he, he came over and did this race. He did the 45 plus 2. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a, a breakaway threat and strong guy in the finish as well. This course was really bumpy. Uh, there was a lot of potholes and cracks, um, kind of these crowned, tapered turns. So you just had to be careful. They were kind of off camber to the side. They're going down into the curb. Um, this was the only right hander on the course. Otherwise, we were all 
making lefts. And then they got these last two quick turns to the finish, which is kind of where you definitely want to be going into the finish line. And here's the final turn going towards the finish line, and it's not a very long sprint, so usually the first two or three guys stay off. You know, if you've got any legs left, it's going to be, it's hard to come around because there's just not a lot of room. I'm just trying to get a feel for, I don't want to get swarmed by too many guys, so I usually don't let myself drift too far back. He had something going on with this chain there. So I think we're coming into the last few laps here, if I remember right. I, pa I usually took this inside line here. I was usually able to pass quite a few people. And then I'm right back at the front. It's a good, nice little pocket to be in right here. And you could usually take the outside line here and keep your momentum and speed up and carry it right into the next turn. And then you have that long straightaway to move up. So you're not having to hit the brakes on the inside and then having to accelerate. So everybody's trying to move up right now. I'm just going to stay right here because that's a good spot. Scott and his teammate, they just came back, and JD is just to my left there, and the Cliff Bar guy, they uh, just got back from Tour of America's Dairyland, which if everybody, if anybody gets a chance to do that race, it's it's unbelievable. It's like San Rafael, but for 11 days in a row. Um, the community, the, the, the neighborhoods, they all get involved. Um, there's always some kind of festival at each race. Um, good crowds really really intense racing um, so you know th those guys came back pretty fit and it's pretty evident by how they're they were always at the front either attacking or chasing back brakes I think our average speed in this race was almost 27 miles an hour which for this course is pretty fast you can see it's how if it's single file like this you can tell it's pretty fast uh, it, there wasn't a whole lot of bunching up. Uh, the 45 plus, like I said, there was a lot of bunching up in that race, and it was actually really sketchy on the last lap. I had to uh, take a lot of chances I probably shouldn't have because I plan on going to nationals in August, and I certainly don't need to crash. And there wasn't a whole lot of money on the line, so I don't. In hindsight, it's probably not the smartest thing to do. I talked to Jerome Nadell after the race, and he had kind of said the same thing. Dude, you don't need to crash. So this race, I was kind of keeping that in mind. I kind of felt like if it was starting to get a little a little aggro or sketchy, I was going to just roll in because I'm essentially just doing this for fitness. But I just had really good legs today. And um, so I kind of felt like, well, you know what, I got a chance. <coughs> There's Mike Sayers in front of me. He's definitely a good wheel to follow. He's almost always going to be up there in the sprint. Got a little sketchy there. And Dave handled it pretty well. The lap cards were kind of buried behind the officials, so it was kind of hard to see. You had to really kind of look for them. There's two guys trying to sneak off, and Sayers was all over that. Uh, that's Dave Grundman in front of me. He's a strong guy from Pete's. Um, he's a pretty good guy going for with a K to go. If you don't, if you don't stay on his wheel, he's going to be gone. So I. He also makes a really good draft, so, and he's a good wheel to follow, so I kind of slotted in behind him thinking, okay, here we go. 
I think we're going to be coming up on the Bell Lab here. That's I'm trying to figure out how this is going to play out. Who's? I know somebody's going to go early, usually after turn two. That little straightaway before the final three turns, there's usually usually somebody goes there. Okay, so yeah, this is I'm pretty sure this is Bell Lap. So now I just gotta make sure I stay up in this front these front guys because somebody's gonna go full gas. Um, Sayers has his teammate Chris Baker in front of him. He's just gonna keep it fast and, st and drill it. So I'm gonna follow Grunman. I'd li I kind of wanted to get yeah see. Yeah, there goes Chris. Oh, there's Chris Baker. So Chris Baker's going. He's front of. My, he's gonna lead out Mike. So I kind of see what's going on. So Scott's going after him. So I'm just gonna slot in behind Scott. David's right on my right hand side here, but we got. So I've got. A, I want to get behind Mike because I know he's gonna go early. So I'm gonna pop around Scott here and get on Mike's wheel. And there he goes. Mike's attacking around. Chris Baker's done with his lead out. We got two turns to go. I've got to close in on Mike. He's got a good jump on me right here. So I'm hoping to c carry my speed through this turn. And I didn't. I didn't stop pedaling, and I just roll right up on him. And uh, luckily, I had a little bit of momentum, and I was able to come around him. David's coming around me to my left, but I was able to hold him off. And there it is. I was actually pretty proud of that. Um, it was a pretty pretty stacked field. So. Uh, in my second race to be able to get up there tells me my fitness is pretty good.